Expressions are another way to animate a property besides keyframes. Typically, the way expressions work is that you take the property from one layer and connect it to another layer. And that's different than parenting. Parenting takes one entire layer and connects it to another entire layer. Here, you're just taking a property and making that connection. That's not the only way expressions work, but that is a frequently used methodology with expressions. Now, expressions are a combination of algebra and JavaScript programming language. So that tends to turn people off. That's kind of daunting, but don't let that turn you off. We're not going to dive into that level of expressions. We're going to stick with the simple approach to expressions, which is to use the pick whip tool to make the connection to another layer property and then use a little bit of math to adjust the expression to suit our purposes. So to follow along, go to Working Files, open up After Effects Projects, then going down to 1501 Expressions. This project has four comps. We're going to work with only two of them. The third comp here is something that I set up full of expressions to animate this clock. Is that not cool? Wow. And if you want to do this, if you want to try to duplicate that, I've given you this starting point here where there's nothing animated there. I'll talk about that at the end, though. So we're going to start off by working in this comp, and we're going to have this big tire drive the small tire. We're going to use an expression to have that happen. So the first order of business is to rotate the big tire. So I've got this big tire here. Press R for rotation. I'm going to set keyframes for the beginning here. Just turn on keyframes for that. We'll go about halfway through, I think. Let's say right around there. And let's have it rotate a few times. Let it rotate, let's say, five times. Then we want to go to the end and then have it rotate back to zero. We'll sort of counter-rotate it. So I'm going to go to the end of this comp and press the page down key to go one more frame after the end, so it'll be a loop. If you ever want it to loop, just have the ending keyframe be one keyframe after the end and have that ending keyframe equal the beginning. So I'm going to go back here and have this be zero, so it'll be exactly the same as the beginning. There we go. So let's watch that guy rotate. It'll get halfway through and suddenly go backwards. Bam, like that. Okay, very good. What I want to do is have some easy ease there, so I just click on the word rotation to select all three of the keyframes and right click here and go keyframe assistant, and we'll go easy ease like that. That'll kind of smooth things out. All right, what I want to do now is I want to impart the rotation of this guy onto this guy. Now, if we use parenting, let's see what would happen. I'm going to right click here, go columns, parent. Now, I want to have this big tire be the parent of the small tire. So I just take the pick whip here from the small tire to the big tire, and now we've parented it, and let's see what happens when they rotate. Not what we really wanted to see happen, right? It's going to go around like that. That's because it's taking on the rotation of the big guy, not what we want to do. So let me undo that little process and get rid of the parent column. What I want to do now is use an expression to have them match the rotation characteristic, just the rotation characteristic. And to do that, I go to the little tire like this, and I press R for rotation. And I need to turn on expressions for the rotation property. And the way you do that is hold down the Alt or the Option key and click on that little hourglass, the toggle animation switch. And when you do that, a couple things happen. You get the word expression colon and the name of the property. And then you get red text here over for the property values. And then you have this thing that says transform rotation inside there. That means that transform is the property group and rotation is the property. And that shows up there here inside this expression. Now nothing will happen at this point. It's kind of a blank slate waiting for you to type in some JavaScript code or some algebra. Well, you know, that's just way, way beyond what we need to do here. All I want to do is connect the rotation of the tire bike to the tire car. And the way you do that is with this little pick whip right there. Notice it's right next to expression. There's the pick whip. And I just drag down to rotation to the property, not to the entire layer, but just to the property there. And now it says this comp layer, and it gives the name of this tire layer here, transform rotation. Take the rotation from here and put it here. We're not done yet, but that's just the beginning of the process. Let me just go over here and see what that looks like. See how they're both rotating now at the same rate and also the same direction, which is not what we want. We don't want this guy going the same way as this guy because they're going to be scraping against each other. So we're going to do a couple things here to have it rotate in the right direction and at the right speed. So I'm going to go back down here to this expression and click on it to make it active. Go to the end here. And I want it to go at the other direction than the direction it's going now. I want it to go the opposite direction. So to do that, all I need to do is multiply times negative 1. It'll then impart a negative rotation instead of a positive rotation. To multiply, you just put an asterisk down, shift 8, or an asterisk, and now negative 1, minus 1. And after you've put in something like this in an expression, to have it accepted, you just click away down here or press the Enter key on the numeric keypad, not on the regular keyboard because that'll just add a line here. So just the numeric keypad 
or click away, and now it's accepted. And now we'll see that it's going to spin in the proper direction. Like they're rotating together like that. See how that works there? But the thing is, that little tire should rotate twice as fast as the big tire. Now you can eyeball that, but you can also actually calculate that. So the way you calculate that is you take a look at the scale. So I'm going to open up scale for both of these layers by going Shift S, opens up scale. I'm going to right click on the scale number here and say edit value. When you do that, you see the scale width and height in terms of percent. But you can also look at it in terms of pixels. So I go over to pixels and say how many pixels wide is that big tire? It's a thousand pixels wide. That's the diameter of the tire, okay? Then this little tire here should be half of that, and that's how it's set up. It'll be more or less half, about 500. Take a look at that, and it's about 500. You can see the height and the width are a little bit different. That's because of the way it was just set up. But it's basically half. So since the diameter is half the size of the big tire, then that means its circumference is half the size, so it needs to rotate twice as fast to cover the same amount of ground. So what I need to do now, instead of minus 1 here, I want to multiply times minus 2. So then I'm going to press the Enter key on the numeric keypad. We've accepted that. And now these guys will rotate together like that and at the right speed. And the bike tire will also take on the easy ease keyframe qualities. So let's take a look at this now. It starts up slowly, gets to the center, slows down, gets back to the beginning, and starts the process all over again. There you go. So that is great. And if you decide, hmm, I'd rather have the rotation not be quite so fast. So I'm going to go to this keyframe right here, just navigate to that keyframe. I'm going to click away so that we don't have all the keyframes selected, otherwise that would be a problem. I want to rotate just twice, for example, instead of five times like that. Click Tab. And now that passes along that information to this one. So it'll be matching it in terms of the speed that's supposed to go. It'll be the proper speed, but having slowed down. So you just change one property and it affects the other property as well. I think that is really cool. And that's just an easy way to apply an expression. You look at the darn expression, you're going, oh my gosh, it looks complex. But in fact, it was very simple. It just took a pick whip to do it. All right, let's go to this clock green, I call it. And you can see that I've got a clock here with a center point, second hand marker. That's this little red guy here. Second hand, minute hand, hour hand in the face. Let me just pull it up a little bit with the hand tool. What I want to do is I want to have all these hands work in concert with each other. So what we need to do is decide which hand will be the one that drives the rest of them. So I think the best choice is the minute hand. It's kind of in the middle of things, so we'll do the minute hand. So I'm going to set rotation for the minute hand. Click on minute hand, press R for the minute hand. Keyframe rotation here at the beginning at zero. Let's say we want to have 12 hours here. So we'll go to the end, page down once to go to the end plus one frame. We'll have it go 12 times so that the minute hand will go around 12 times. Let's just take a look at that. There's the minute hand going around 12 times, as we can see. So if the minute hand goes around 12 times, how many times does the second hand go around? I'll open up the second hand, press R, and rather than try to put in keyframes to do that, let's have it work with the minute hand, because later on I might want to change how many times it goes around. So I need to turn on expressions for rotation in the second hand by going Alt or Option and clicking on the toggle animation stopwatch. Makes the text red, adds that line, has this little place that's holding pattern here. I just take the pick whip and drag it down to the minute hand like that. And now if the minute hand goes around once, how many times does the second hand go around? It goes around 60 times, of course. So we go multiply times 60. So asterisk, 60. Press the enter key on the numeric keypad or click away. We've now accepted that. Now I'm just going to go slowly here. You can see the second hand goes really quickly as we go around here for each little frame at a time. All right. How about the hour hand? Go down here to the hour hand. Open up the hour hand by clicking on it and pressing R for the hour hand and turning on expressions for it by holding down the Alt of the Option key and clicking on the toggle animation switch. How fast will the hour hand go relative to the minute hand? Every time the minute hand goes around once, the hour hand goes one twelfth of the way around. So the minute hand goes around for one hour and the hour hand goes for one twelfth of the way around. So we need to connect it to the minute hand and then divide by 12. So we just take the pick whip, go up to the minute hand and connect it like that, and divide by 12. And to divide, you just put the forward slash there and then 12. Press the enter key in the numeric keypad or click away. And now the hour hand is connected to the minute hand. So as the minute hand goes around one time, it's now one o'clock. It goes around two times, it's two o'clock. That's how it works. All right, let's take a look at the last little thing, the second hand marker right there. I purposely put it off to the left like that just to give you a little bit of a challenge here. 
So rather than use the minute hand to drive this as an expression, let's use the second hand to drive it. It's an expression, but we can use it. We can connect the marker to the second hand. It makes more sense to do that. So let's turn on expressions for the second hand marker's rotation property by Alt or Option clicking on its toggle animation switch. Now I want to connect that to the second hand rotation property. So just take the pick whip and drag it down to rotation. It highlights like that. Now I need to click the enter key on the numeric keypad or just click away and we'll accept that. And now if I page down a couple times, you'll see that the little red thing goes along with it. Let me click away so you don't see the gray border around it. There we go. It's going around with it, but notice it's five seconds behind. So we need to adjust this a little bit. Now when I set this up, I made sure that the anchor point for this thing is right in the center. I also put the anchor point for all the hands in the center as well. So this thing is moving around with its anchor point down here. But I need to move it so that it lines up with the second hand. And basically it's how many degrees behind there. It's one twelfth of a circle behind. So 12 into 360, that's 30. So it's 30 degrees behind. We need to add 30 degrees to it to have it catch up to the second hand. So I go over here, click on the rotation so you can see its expression. Click on expression here like that. And just add 30 degrees. So plus 30. Click on the enter key on the numeric keypad or click away. And now it's lined up. Let me just pull this down so you can see it. There it is, all lined up there. So as I page down here, you'll see that little marker follows the second hand. There we go. How about that? So now we've got it. Let's just take a look at this thing. We'll just play it here. And you'll see that it plays very fast. Hard to even watch the second hand as it goes by so quickly. Time moves quickly here inside After Effects. So I'm thinking so that people can actually see this thing, I want to change how many hours we're going to watch here. So I'm going to do that by going back down to the minute hand. We'll look at the last keyframe for the minute hand here by navigating right to it. We see that it's going around 12 times, right? Let's have it go around just once. I'll click on that tab. And let's see if that changed things. Now it's going to go a little slower, right? And then go around just one hour. Everybody else will line up though. There you go. And done. Now it's going to jump back to 12 and rotate back because it's looping back. Or we can change it to go even slower. I'm going to go back to the last keyframe again, navigate to that one. Instead of 1x, I'll make it 0. Just have it be, let's say, oh, 60 degrees. So this means we change just the minute hand and all the rest of the hands follow along. Very cool. That is the real value of expressions. You can have one thing driving everything else. And if you want to make a change to that entire system, all you need to do is go back and change that one properties animation, that one property set of keyframes. Now let's look at these last two things. It's the clock and gears here. I want to see all the expressions that I put in here. To see expressions, you press the E key twice, E, E. And that shows you all the expressions, all the guys with red numbers there. You see them all like that. Lots of things have expressions here. I worked really hard on this thing, folks. So I hope that you take a look at it. Let's just go through here and see how that looks. Is that not great? I just love that. And what you can do, if you care to, if you want to just try this out, is to do this same kind of thing with this guy over here. Do notice that when you look at the hour hand, for example, that the anchor point's in the middle, so you need to drag it down there to the center. Same thing for the minute hand. It's off there. You need to bring it back down. Otherwise, rotation on that will look a little odd. It'll look like that, which is not what you want to see, right? All the gears here should have their anchor points set up properly, but those two guys don't. In any event, if you want to do this, just take a look at this, see how I did it, and then give that other guy a try. So that is how you use the Pick Whip tool to set up some basic expressions.